Hey, it's Tim. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about manufacture homes and I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. All right, we're back. So I get a few questions every day or every few weeks, you know, something like that about manufacture homes. So I put together a presentation and it's going to tell you the different types of homes. I'm going to tell you about financing and I'm also going to go into the pros and cons. So I'm going to go ahead here and share my computer screen and we're just going to get into it. So this is a presentation I put together. Um, you can step around. But it's really important that you watch the whole thing because it's a lot of information and a lot of things people do not know about manufacture homes. OK, so first off, I want to just welcome you uh, to my channel. You know, welcome to my channel. Uh, I am uh, Tim Tom Koviak and I am a licensed loan officer and my license number right there is one eight six six seven three one. So basically I uh, pass the exam fingerprint, credit report, all that stuff to get my federal license. And I'm authorized to give you this information. A lot of times on these YouTube channels, people aren't licensed, you know, they're just making content. Um, but I'm actually licensed um, to give you this. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm your trusted loan officer right there. And my goal is to simplify the mortgage process um, and make it easy and simple. I'm available from application uh, to closing, I take pride in education, my, educating my clients or customers, which I'm doing right now. And then I do specialize in helping uh, first time home buyers. So, um, and all your financial needs. Okay. So that's a little bit about me. And the next thing that we're going to talk about is, uh, what exactly is a manufactured home? And as you see here, I have a few pictures here. A lot of people, you know, get this confused. They don't know what a manufactured home is. There's actually different types. So one type is the first one here, and that is a trailer. So a trailer there. And it's important to know what type you're buying. Um, and I'll, I'll go over that later on, why that's important. And the next type is something called a single wide. So this is a single wide here. And then we have here a, um, this is just a manufactured, uh, really the manufactured is a trailer, a manufactured is a single wide, okay? And then we have a double wide. So a double wide is double wide opposed to a single wide. They're both manufactured homes. So these are both manufactured, but this is a single wide, double wide, and this is what you call a trailer. And now there's something else that falls on this category, and that would be a module home right here. Now, this does look a little bit big. Most module homes um, are not this big, but I will go into module homes and tell you everything you need to know about them. But I put this uh, quick description here, and I'm going to read this to you. A manufactured home can be described um, as a formerly home as a mobile home. So some of them can be moved or improved. They're not built like a traditional home, like a traditional home is built on site. These homes are pieced together um, somewhere else. They're manufactured somewhere else, and then they're moved to the location to where the homeowners live. So that's the main difference. A single family home is built on site, and then a manufactured home is built at a factory and moved to where the person can actually live. And I put some um, examples here for you to see. So here's one home. And right off the bat here, you can see the price. You see the price here. The price is uh, $24,000. And that's what attracts a lot of people to these homes is the price. Um, they seem very reasonable and affordable. And sometimes they're in some pretty nice areas. So the price right there is $24,000. But you need to note something. Um, some of these have something called a HOA. See that HOA here? I'm going to circle that. And what that is, is basically you own the property. So you own the property right here. So you own the property, but you rent the land. See the land here? You rent the land. And that's where this $700.60, and it not only just the land, it probably includes maybe water, 
um, trash and some other services. Okay. And that uh, 760 is something you will pay no matter what. So if you pay off the 24,000 right here, if you pay that off, you still will pay this HOA for the life the loans you own that property. So you want to be conscious of that. And it can go up any time. So be conscious of that too. That can go up. They can change it. And you just have to pay it. You don't really have too much of a say. But let's look at this home. It looks pretty decent here. Um, it looks really nice. I like the trees here. I like the little porch, little shed, you know. It looks really nice. And let's, let's see what this description says here. Right over here. We're going to look at this description here. So it's a beautiful, affordable home in Novi. So Novi is actually a nice area here in Michigan. Um, it really is. Um, and let's see what else it says. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath. Has a furnish, new air condition, um, open floor plan, 1,200 square feet. Oh, this is cool. Um, jacuzzi tub. Okay, jacuzzi. Okay, now we're talking. Appliances are included, so appliances would be like um, your oven, um, your refrigerator, that kind of thing. And then here we go. Here's that seven sixty a month. That includes water, like I said, trash pickup, and then has a pool, a cool clubhouse, and a fitness center. So you get a few extra perks, but um, that seven sixty is is kind of pricey a little bit. Now let's look at another one here. And now this one right here. This would be definitely a trailer. So this is this is a trailer. You can tell right here it's a trailer. Just look at it. You can tell this is a trailer. And look at the price. Only five thousand dollars for two bedrooms, one bath. So you see I'm saying people see these prices and go, wow, that's real affordable. But they don't really know a lot about it. And I'm gonna get into everything to it. So what about this one? It says step inside your we're over here, right here. Step inside, you immediately notice a newly uh, renovated uh, kitchen, stall, a relaxing room, and it's been well maintained. Um, and that's another thing. Some of these can fall apart after a while. So normally, um, after they move it, it normally doesn't get moved again because it can get you know broken or damaged. Um, but some can be moved multiple times depending on the um, type, especially a trailer. A trailer could be a mobile home or a trailer because it can be moved, and that mean, makes it mobile, okay? And let's look at another one now. now. This one looks a little bit different here. You see this? This this is what you call a module, okay? This is a module home. And the, the price, again, is affordable, $57,000. And you're getting three bedrooms, two baths, uh, 1,500 square feet. And it looks like it's been on the market for uh, 56 days. It was built 2002. And this stands for module slash mobile home. But this is a module home. What a module home is, is basically it's a, a flat piece of cement and they put it on top. Usually module homes cannot be moved. Usually module homes are built with a little bit more quality than opposed to manufactured or mobile home. Okay. And let's see what it says here. So it has a porch, deck, three bedroom, two bath, a primary bedroom, appliances. Um, you know, call that number, okay? And look, it also has management, okay? So pool, fitness, playground. So this one probably will have a um, HOA fee too. So whenever you see something like a pool or um, a playground or a fitness center, that's a, a key sign that that's probably gonna have a HOA, but it's not listed here, okay? And let's look at another one here. Okay, what does this look like? Okay. So this one's a little bit more pricey. It's uh, $59,000, and it's two baths, two bedrooms, uh, about uh, 1,069 square feet. It was built 1985, and you want to pay attention to when it's built, and that's because of uh, financing, but we'll, we'll get to that later on. Um, it looks like this was, a vent this was probably at first just a maybe a single wide, or double white, and they eventually added this on there. That looks like an addition here. This looks like an addition. Um, but it looks pretty nice. It doesn't look that bad. And let's see what it says here. It's on 2.5 acres. That's nice. They said it's a mobile. 
1985 mobile and located it relatively by paved road and stuff like that. And you see this one, it does not have any like trash or club center. So this probably would not have an HOA. So let's go to the next slide here. And here's another one here. This one looks, this one's a double wide, okay, mobile home. You see this one, this looks really nice. This almost looks like a single family home. And I like the price, $40,000, but uh-oh, here we go. That HOA, look at that, $690, that's a little pricey. So just be conscious of these HOAs. A lot of people are not aware of them. And remember, they can go up too. But I like the way the outside looks. I like the porch, the deck here, the tree. I like the little shed. Looks really nice. Um, if it wasn't for this uh, right here, this HOA, I would you know, probably like this one. So it's a two bed. It's a three bedroom. Okay. Two bath, double wide for sale located in Lake Hills Mobile Community. So another thing, when you see a community, that automatically tells you it's probably in a park or it's probably you're not going to own that land. So you're just going to own the property. Now, remember, with a single family home, the property and the land come together. With mobile, manufactured, things like that, they don't come together. And, yep, same thing. Uh, pool, dryer. Oh, it says pre-approval here for occupancy. Some details. So when you're looking at these homes online, really look at the description. Uh, try to get as much information as you can, you know, before you actually um, contact them. And then here are some things to know here. So we'll, we'll talk about things to know here. All right. So some things that you want to know is that uh, a manufactured homes are easier to finance with the land. Okay. You got that? So if you own the land, it's easier to finance. And the reason why it's easier to finance with uh, land is because if you're asking somebody for a loan, but you don't own the land, they just own the property on top of it, like the lien, or you have a mortgage on the just property, the land Someone that owns land could tell you to move. Someone that owns land could raise the fees. So it's a lot of unknown to the lender. So when you don't own the land, it's in a park. It can be harder to get financing because, again, you don't own the land. So you own the property on top of the land. But whoever owns the land can tell you to move or raise up your HOA fee. It's a lot of unknown. So it's a little bit harder to get financing if you don't own the land. Next thing here is that manufactured homes are easy to customize yes so that kind of a benefit so easy to customize means you can always add another slack or an addition to it um, so you can just customize it to what you like now remember if you're in a park and you don't own the land you may need to get that approved but if you own the land you could do whatever you want if you want to stack them on top of each other one behind each other you know you're welcome to do so do so <laughs> Uh, next one right here. Uh, manufactured homes are for long-term housing, okay? So what that means is that if you buy a manufactured home, it's not like you can buy it and then turn around and flip it or sell it. They're hard to get financing for and they're, some are hard to sell. So it's not like something where you can fix up and flip or it's not something you would buy and then you change jobs and move. This is a long-term commitment, okay? Remember that. Um, so if you buy one of these, be really sure because this is long-term, okay? Okay, let's do the next one. Manufactured homes exist outside of parks. So they do exist outside of parks. You just have to really look for them. And ideally, that's a little bit better way to go. Because you own the land and the manufactured home, and you have a lot more control. You don't have to pay HOA fees. It's, it's basically yours, okay? Uh, know what you are purchasing, okay? That's very important. You want to know what you're purchasing, okay? Are you purchasing a trailer? Are you purchasing a single wide, a double wide, or module? You want to know this because by knowing this, you could know if it's going to be hard to sell you can know if they're going to be hoa fees you can know if you're going to customize it so you need to know what you're purchasing okay 
Don't just buy something and then later on find out that you can't get out of it or, you know, there's other restrictions, okay? And then this is a big one too right here. Uh, manufactured homes can decrease in value, okay? So some of them can go down in value. Now, generally speaking, with uh, a single family home, you know, a condominium, generally speaking, those go up in value. They usually go up um, anywhere from three to five percent, you know, a year. But these can decrease because um, it's just the way they're built. They're, they're built better now, but they're not built from the ground up with a basement where you know single family homes can last you know well over 100 years but sing but manufactured homes sometimes cannot last as long and that's why you want to pay attention to when it was built and then they can be very affordable housing so you know i i've worked with people in florida and florida actually is, is very pricey right now florida is not cheap so they got a manufacturer home in florida so it's an option if you're in an area where single family condominiums like regular homes townhomes are hard to find you might be able to find a good deal on these but remember is there an hoa is it in a park you know you know what type is this things like that can you get financing for it so you got to ask those questions okay and then now we're going to get into financing. This is the big part, financing, because you can like one and find one. But if you can't get financing for it, then you can't buy it, you know, unless you have money, unless you're sitting on, unless you're selling a home and you got two or three hundred thousand or, you know, fifty thousand, forty thousand. Um, you can borrow from your 401k if you have some money there and buy one outright cash, something like that. But let's talk about financing. OK, so financing, you can get a conventional mortgage. OK. You can get a government back loan. Um, you can get a dealer or owner financing. And you get something called a chatter loan. And let's go in detail of these real quick here. A conventional loan. These are for Fannie and Freddie. A government back loan would be like a FHA, a VA, or USDA. Those are all government back loans. And then dealer. A dealer would be someone that's in the park. So some of these communities are dealers too. So they're, they're a community, but they're also a dealer. They could help uh, finance it in-house. And then owner financing. Owner financing means that the owner that owns it, he can give you financing. You guys work out your own agreement, and that's owner financing. Another word for that could be a land contract. And then a uh chatter loan this one kind of works like a car loan and i'm going to go more in depth into all of these okay so first we're going to talk about conventional conventional loan uh, will probably be the best if you can do it because it'll have the lowest interest rate if you can do it and a conventional you would need a down payment of five percent plus your closing costs they traditionally do traditionally do 20 year terms and you must own the land so it cannot be in a park and then you need a minimum FICO of 620 or higher preferably higher um, and you can get conventional finance next we're going to talk about um, government back loan specifically uh, FHA so a FHA stands for federal housing uh, administration and you can go up to 30 years, you know, and you can get a down payment of 3.5% and a minimum FICO of 620. So that's another good option. Um, and remember, too, with FHA, you must own the land as well. I should have put that in here. Uh, you know, must own land. Okay. And FHA is a good option. Because uh, you can get a low interest rate just like conventional. It's government back. And just a note with uh, a FHA loan, um, it must meet HUD standards. Okay. HUD is housing. It's, it's HUD means, I, I can't think of it right now, but you got to meet the HUD standards. That means no chipping paint, no exposed wires, um, no, um, just it, it, it can't be anything that's a safety issue. Okay. 
Uh, and that's something that they will do when they inspect the home or do an appraisal. But FHA is a good option because you can go to 30 years and you'll get a low rate. So that's a good one too. Another one is VA. The VA is a really nice loan. So with VA, you can go 30 years. Uh, there's no down payment. So either though there's no down payment, you still have your closing costs. There's um, a minimum FICO of 620 and you must own the land, okay? Must own the land for uh, any kind of government back loan. But VA has low rates, uh, no down payment, and that's another good option. A VA is a government back loan, backed by the government and through the VA, United uh, Veterans Association, okay? Dealer financing. Now, I like dealer financing because um, they, they basically cater to this. They cater to manufactured home. Now, with dealer financing, you will contact the park, and the park usually get a little bit lower credit, so 580 or above. Down payment really varies on your credit. So just so you know, the lower your credit is, the higher the down payment, the higher your credit is, the lower the down payment, okay? And then have flexible terms. Again, terms are based on your credit too. So the higher your credit, you could stretch it out a little longer. If you have a little bit worse credit, they might want a little bit shorter term. And that's also going to play a factor in is the age of the uh, manufactured home. The age plays a factor in the term too. And this is allowed to be in a park. So remember, based on the property you like, is it in the park? Yes. So if it's in a park, you don't own the land, okay? Next, we have owner financing. So owner financing could also be a land contract. All that means is that I go to you and say, hi, Mr. Joe, I want to buy your home. And we uh, arrange an agreement. So a uh, land contract, oh, I have it right there. Usually the down payment is 10 to 20% usually. They usually want a little bit larger down payment because you're, you're asking someone to move into a home and it's technically not your home until it's paid off. So the way it works, you give them a little extra money um, so you know you can move into the home. Now, you want to be careful. You want to make sure that it's a really good contract. Sometimes realtors can help you with that contract. You pay them a small fee, and they'll help you write up that contract. But normally, you give them a little bit of cash up front, and then there's no minimum FICO because it's an owner. It's basically me saying, hey, pay me every month, and when you're done paying me, I'm going to go ahead and give you the title or deed, and then I'm out of it. So it's very important to have a good contract and to document your payments because you can be paying the owner every month. And if that owner is not making the payments, you can get a foreclosure notice and, and then you document the payments and you can show that you paid um, that money um, to the to the owner. And, the, you know, what I'm saying so, so be, be aware of that document your payment, have a good contract just to avoid that because I've had some situations where people did a land contract and they had bad terms. There's all different types of land contracts, but it's really flexible, you know, based on the um, owner and what you guys uh, come up with. Now we're talking about chattel financing right here. This one kind of works like a, like a car loan almost where the car is like the main um, collateral. And the benefit of this one is that it goes down to 35, and I believe it can even go lower, lower than 35. Now, they do have higher interest rates on these, and the terms are a little bit lower, and then the FICO a little bit lower, and usually a 5% down payment. And these are allowed inside a park. So this is inside a park, too. So you it could be inside a park. So... Just kind of recap real quick for you here with the um, financial agreements here. Let me just recap for you real quick. Any kind of conventional own land. So if you, in conventional, you have to own land. Any government back loan, you got to own land. So VA, FHA, USDA, you got to own the land. Owner financing doesn't matter. Dealer financing doesn't matter. And then chattel financing doesn't matter. Some other requirements just to be aware of is that most of the time with financing, 
um, except for owner. They, they want it built after 1978, so they don't want it too old because some of these too old are falling apart and they don't want to give you money on it. And normally, it, for all financing, uh, it has to be um, on a permanent foundation. It cannot be moved. Because think about it, I'm, you're, you're, <laughs> you just take the home and, and leave. <laughs> so a lot of times they want to make sure it cannot be moved. And then with all of them, usually you want something called a structural engineering report. Now, if you're doing an FHA, you want it to make sure it meets FHA standards. If you're doing a uh, you know, VA, you want it to meet VA. But the structural engineering report is great because it's going to protect you and the seller for you is going to let you know that the condition of this home and is it can it be moved has it been moved how is the foundation is it going to fall apart and um most financing will require that the only one who doesn't require that would be like our owner financing but you want to do it anyway because you want to make sure this is on a good foundation it's not going to fall apart and then let's a little bit talk about some of the pros and cons of buying a uh, manufacture home uh, a, a pro it's typically they're more affordable yeah that that's a pro I mean we've seen some you know 26,000 30,000 and they're 5,000 for a trailer okay they can be quickly installed that's another option too is that you could buy a brand new one and have it installed okay and then they're a versatile. You can customize it. You know, you can do whatever you want. Add another block, a side block. You can do, you know, whatever you want with it. Some cons to it, okay? Difficult to finance. They can be very difficult to finance, especially if you're in a park. If you're in a park, you only have maybe one or two options. Dealer, charter, financing, or a land contract. So it can be a little bit difficult. But if you're outside a park, you have a few more options because you own the land too. Uh, they're limited locations, so they're not everywhere. You know, they're not zoned to be everywhere. They're, they're only in certain places. And then sometimes they have a negative stigma to it. You know, uh, I think of that whole Eminem song, two trail park girls go around the outside, around the outside. So yeah, sometimes you get a negative stigma. But I have been in some manufactured homes. I have refinanced some manufactured homes. Um, and some look really nice. You can't even tell inside. You can't even tell. So, but there could be a negative stigma. But if you're looking for affordable housing, this may be a vital option for you. But it's important to make sure you can secure financing and know what type it is and um, do your you know homework and research, okay? You know, make sure of that. And did you have any questions? Um, you can go ahead and drop those questions in the chat below if you have any questions. And um, that completes it there. <laughs> Man, that, that took about 27 minutes there. And uh, thank you so much. Now, if you have more questions, uh, comment below or contact me. Um, I do do financing for um, manufactured homes. But with our guidelines, you do have to own the land. Um, we do a, a structural engineering report. But we do have really competitive rates, and I can help you with that. Um, also, if you're looking for a single family home, I can help you with that. So it's good to look at all your options, not just one option. Um, housing is a big issue. I have a lot of people that are struggling with housing, especially finding affordable housing where I live in Michigan. But if you have questions, I'd love to answer for you and help you. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.